Hi all and welcome back to OK Games. Welcome to the second episode of this tutorial series where I share with you how I am making an auto battle game. In this video we are gonna add a shop where we can buy our units and placing them on the map. To do so we'll add a simple database that will contain the needed data for each unit and the concept of money that will be used to buy the units of course. With that being said, let's start. Let's start with the entity database. Add a new script and call it entities database SO. Now let's open it and make this class a scriptable object. The main thing we'll need here is a list of all the entities that we have. The data that we'll need for the moment are a prefab for the unit, its name, an icon to display in the shop and its cost. If we return back to Unity, we can right-click and create our entity database. For the moment I only have two types of unit, the dragon, which is ranged, and the knight, who is melee. So we can drag and drop our prefab, assign a name and a cost for each one. And a fancy icon, obviously made with paint. We can now head to our game manager script and add a reference to the newly created database. We can get rid of this early stage code and remove the automatically add of new units. Ok, great. Now that we have our entity database set up, we can start with the creation of the shop. Let's right click and add a canvas. One important thing I would like to point out is the setting of the canvas scaler. Remember to set the scale mode to scale with screen size and set the reference resolution to a higher standard value like Full HD. Doing this, your user interface will scale based on the screen size and will use that resolution as reference. I will fast forward the creation of my shop, or this video will be too long. My version of the shop will be a vertical sidebar with 5 cards that you can buy. When we have finished creating our UI, we can add a new script that will customize each card. Let's call it UI card and open it. Each card will have an image of the unit, it will hold its name and display its cost. Let's add a setup function that will take as input the entity data and the reference to the shop. In the setup function we can fill our data and save the reference of the shop script. The only other function needed will be used to handle the click on the card. Now we can head to a new script called UI Shop. It will have a list of all the cards that the shop will contain. Add a new function called Generate Cards that will fill each card and another one to be called when a card is clicked. We will also need a reference to the entity database, so in the start method let's save it through the game manager. In the generate function, cycle through each card and call the setup function with a random unit taken from the entity database. Let's head back to Unity and reference all the needed field to the UI card script. Make a prefab out of it and then add all the 5 cards to the UI shop script. If you lock the inspector onto the shop object, you can simply select all the cards and drag and drop them to the all card field. Before trying this, 
add the reference of the database to the game manager and let's pump up the cost of a unit, the dragon for example. If we now hit play, we can see our shop being filled. That's a good start, I see. It's time to add the click function. First thing, let's remove the raycast target from each element that doesn't need it. In this way, we'll improve performance a little bit and we will avoid problem when clicking. Ok, now we can add the click function on the button. Let's apply the prefab and hit play. If we now click on a card, we can see the log being printed. Seeing a log isn't that satisfying, so now let's make our unit spawn. Let's head to the game manager and add a function to be called when a unit is bought. In this function we can simply instantiate a unit based on the given data and assign it to team1 and give him a name. Before trying this, don't forget to disable a card after it has been bought, or we could buy an infinite times the same card. To do so, we'll need a reference to the card that has been clicked in order to disable the corresponding game object, and we don't have this information, so let's add it. Ok, now we can return to Unity and try and instantiate some units. As you can see, when we now click on a unit, it appears in the scene and we can buy every unit in the shop until it runs out, and we have 5 units on the field. Seeing the shop this empty reminds me of another button that needs to exist, a refresh button, that just, well, refreshes the shop, making available some new 5 cards. The shop will handle this refresh function, so we can add some code. Let's return to Unity, add the click function to the refresh button and hit play to try this. Great, now every time we hit refresh we get 5 new cards to choose from. Well, for now we only have 2 units, that there's not that much choice, I know. Now that we can choose our own unit, we should add a button to start the fight against some randomly generated units. If we head back to the game manager, we can add a function called debug fight that will spawn a fixed count of units for the opponent team, alias Team2. I've just copy-pasted the old code and replaced some part with a new reference to the database. Let's return to Unity and add the function to the button. If we now enter play mode, we can make our own team by selecting some units from the shop. so it's a fair battle. And if we hit fight, as you can see, some enemy units will spawn and the battle will begin. Ok, now that everything is working, one last thing, we should add money to our game. The easiest way to do so is to have a manager class that handles that. So, let's create a new script called player data. Open it and make it a manager. For now, it will only take care of the money that we currently have. So, a property is needed and two function. One that check if we can afford something and one that decreases the amount of money we currently have. To finish off the script, an action to let the listener know when something has changed. We will use this to update our UI. Let's return to Unity and add a text to display the money at our disposal. For now the shop will handle this text, we will change this later. In the start method, register to the onUpdate action of the player data class, with a function called refresh, where we simply set the text value to the amount of money that we have. Now let's update our buy function in order to check if we can afford to buy a unit, and if so, spend those money to buy a unit. Add the same logic to the refresh button and we are done!
let's try this. Let's buy our own team and see if we can beat a random team with 25 coins. Okay, I can't. And I don't like to lose. Let's add a little bit more of coins and see if I can do it. Okay, now it's a fair fight. Oh god, I won! Who would have guessed that? As you might notice, if we hit fight again, some other unit will spawn. And we can still buy units when fighting. We will address this in the next video. This is enough for today. If you're still here, you probably enjoyed the video, so why not leaving a like? Come on, hit that like button and make me happy. Jokes apart, thank you for watching and subscribe to follow me in this tutorial series to create an auto battle game. That's all, see you next time.